Hello. I'm sitting here in my dressing gown because I've just had my afternoon nap, well, a short while ago. But I said I would make a little video about my teaching experience, so here we go. I fell into teaching, really. When I was growing up in my family, the limit of ambition was to become a postie. Everybody was a postman. I tried it once at Christmas during the university holidays. I think it was 1973, 1974. Um, got bitten by a dog, didn't do it again. Uh, I was never encouraged really to study or to have ambition and therefore when I finished my degree I didn't really know what I was going to do and I ended up going to teacher training college which I actually quite enjoyed and much to my surprise I did quite well at that. I then got a job for a year in an exchange system whereby people come to this country to be French assistants or German assistants in schools. And I went to France to be an English language assistant. Fortunately, I got a job in a teacher training college. And they required, oh, oh it was terrible, they required one hour a week and I got paid. So I can't say I particularly enjoyed that because when you're a language assistant in a school or even in a, a teacher training college, the students aren't really that keen and I didn't really make any friends in France. When I came back to the UK, I got as far as London and I thought, oh, let's try here. And I just applied for the first job. Something just happened there. Someone came up on the screen and I couldn't read it. Um, I applied for the first job that I saw. It was in an advertising agency's accounts department. I got that, so I found a place to stay. Stayed there, f there for a year, but checking the amounts on people's accounts was not my cup of tea. Every month I had to reconcile the accounts for different um, agencies, different people who make ads. So after a year, I found another job. I went to work in tourism, which is something I really, really enjoyed. And I did a couple of jobs in tourism for a while uh, in London, then Edinburgh, and then down in um, Tunbridge Wells in Kent. Then I went into, what's it called? Antiques. And I ran an antiques business for myself for a while. Uh, but one of my fellow antique dealers was making extra money by taking French people, uh, French youngsters over to her house in Yorkshire uh, in order to help them with their English and she asked me to help. I then decided I would do a qualification called CERTISOL, Certificate in Teaching English to Students of Other Languages. And that course was the best thing I ever did. I enjoyed it so, so very much. So I ended up going to work in 
colleges, private schools, uh, universities around Lancashire. And I progressed from uh, some of the lower levels, shall we say. I wasn't too keen on beginners, but uh, everything from there onwards I enjoyed very much. I even got up to, to teaching advanced and liked that very, very much. The students were usually very receptive and very nice. Uh, and although I'm I'm less able now, shall we say. I'm older, I don't have energy now. But I used to love to be the teacher who would walk into a room and entertain and get the students interested and participating. After I met Xiaomin, we went, or I went, down to London, where he was already teaching in UCL, University College London. I got a job there too, and uh, again, I enjoyed that very much. When we decided to come up to Scotland, we got uh, jobs in University of Aberdeen, some place I really don't recommend, I'm afraid. Again, Man uh, Shamin was teaching Mandarin, I was teaching English, academic English to, um, for pre-sessional students, or IELTS, and IELTS was my favourite. Unfortunately, the university uh, began this connection with the Confucius Institute of China. <laughs> and they didn't require a Mandarin, a proper Mandarin teacher after that. They simply took Chinese students who had just arrived, gave them two days training to teach Mandarin and by all accounts they were pretty hopeless and probably still are but Xiaomin was out of work I complained also about the way he was treated so I was not dismissed as such my course was my courses were discontinued uh, despite the fact that the secretary said to me one day no, no, you won't be getting a P45, which is the certificate of, you know, when you leave a, a company or university. Uh, one arrived and I didn't have any work. So we eventually decided to go to Taiwan. Now in Taiwan, mm, that was a story. Two places I taught. First one, on Zhongxiao East Road or West Road? East. East. Zhongxiao East Road in Taipei. It was called Cambridge Taipei. And the way they operate is rather strange. They have consultants. The consultants don't necessarily have good English and Emily there certainly didn't. Uh, they also have a different way of teaching. They believe in handing out reams and reams of paper of vocabulary or phrases to learn. And that is not how I teach. And Emily didn't like this. And she argued with me all the time, telling me what I should be doing. No idea of how much teaching I, I had, but she wanted to tell me what to do. W 
the first course she gave me was English for tourism because of my tourism background. <coughs> I enjoyed that. I enjoyed it very much and I think the students did too. I hope they did. The next course in English for Tourism she gave to someone else. And I was a little bit peeved. Maybe I didn't do what she wanted, so she gave the course to someone else. I was given another class, but again I was told I had to hand out hundreds of pages of um, phrases, sentences, vocabulary. Not actually teach them, just hand them out. And I sort of looked at her and I thought, nah. So I walked out. But I went across the road to another cram school, as they call them, called CES. I can't remember what it stands for. Um, but they were much, much better. They recognised my experience and they left me to teach the way I wanted to teach. I think that was probably the best class that I had, the first one I had there. And um, and I think, I like to think that the students appreciated the way that I taught. Other tutors there also had the same approach, so I think they were used to it. But we didn't have any interference from consultants. Apart from one day when um, I went to a cupboard to find a book, and it was a tall cupboard almost up to the roof and as I opened the door I discovered one of the consultants or one of the receptionists asleep on a shelf. Mm -mm. Oh there's a cat out there. Um, sadly when my mother died I came back here uh, my health deteriorated and I'm not really able to teach anymore. Uh, I find it so tiring. But during this lockdown, which is very boring for everybody, I've been offering one-to-one -one chat sessions. I don't teach, I just chat and if there's a question, I will answer it, but I try not to... Well, put it this way, I don't plan what's going to happen um, because that just makes me panic. I simply say, if you want to chat, let's chat. I don't mind where you are. I don't mind why you want to chat, but if you need to practice English, excuse me, if you need to practice English, or if you want to practice English, or if you want to chat, please, please uh, look at the other posts on my page. And I hope to speak to some of you soon. Bye.